can't uh, recall. We've got about four minimum seven and a half hour trip to the nearest hospital when it's much easier to be really rich and have the doctor travel to you. So she's set up in here. We also have an apothecary kit there yeah. because yeah. Lady McNabb's youngest sister, Aunt Sophia, there's a little bit of a repetition of names through this house, Aunt Sophia moves into the house to help look after Lady McNabb and manage the running of the household. Sophia, the daughter, we keep this room cold with a uh, 13 foot deep ice pit at the far end. You can go down and check it out. It would hold seven tons of ice. We'd be carving out large blocks of ice from and stoves and furnaces throughout the basement as well. So they didn't have another winter. Mm -hmm. The room was heated throughout the day. Imagine carrying mm -hmm. a pocket in. Eh? Now we're going to head through this tunnel. This tunnel was built by the British soldiers who were on this property for the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. The tunnel is six feet two inches in height. If you're taller than that, you might have to go two to three blocks for the nearest pump or well. She gets a bucket full of water, runs back inside, fills a basin of water, washes the dishes, dries the dishes, and then takes that gross, dirty, post-dish water back outside to the servants is protected. The female servants sleep in the beds at the back. The male servants sleep out in the coach house where you got the tickets, mm -hmm. but then the men would be sleeping on the second floor. Great. About a week. So very efficient for storing all of those goodies and preserving them for winter use. Oh my God. So we've got this beautiful dream modern kitchen with these valves. So wow. you can see all of the different wires and each wire would connect to a different valve all the way along. So these bells would be rung any time that handle was turned because it would just pull on the wire. Now I'm going to ring some for you just so you can hear the difference between the tones.
Sophia McNabb got married in the castle. So they had 130 guests at her wedding, and therefore that meant they also had 130 people who can tell us what the house looked like. Mm. So it really helped us in getting along and figuring out how to restore our house. It also lets us keep our beautiful entryway. So the columns there were added in 1855 specifically for her wedding so that none of the guests would get wet or cold if it was snowing and raining on her November wedding. All of the walls in our house are original to the time. There are the original walls there and all of the furnishings are from 1855 or earlier. So instead of using our really historic, sensitive two double wood doors, we're going to go in this little green door. Yes, to see first. Now we've got a map here and this is what Hamilton would have looked like in the 1850s. So you can see, so come on in, welcome to the withdrawing room. This is the most formal room of the house. It's also the ladies domain. So gentlemen, you are allowed to enter the room, but you have to seek the ladies permission okay. before you sit down. Okay. Oh, there also are a few rules. You're not allowed to talk about the following. Sports, oh. business, <laughs> politics, law, finance, or anything which the ladies aren't interested in. Wow. So, so what are they interested in? Computers, sound <laughs> systems, <laughs> automobiles, <Blackberries>. blackberries. <laughs> in this room, you're discussing arts and culture, oh. literature, plays oh. that you've seen refined topics which the ladies would have an equal footing on. Mm. So this is the society room. I'll take that with me. <laughs> <laughs> the society room, I like that. Oh, room. that's nice. Is this the original? Uh, if you can stand on the carpet allowed in any of the pretty formal rooms until she's 14 years old. Ooh. So this also would have been an adults only room. Oh, so gentlemen, we explained that you had the, late. this is the ladies room, but don't worry, it is equal. You do have a gentleman's library. We've got the McNabb tartan throughout the room. And we've also got McNabb displaying some of his achievements as well. The gentleman in the painting is Cousin Archibald. And Cousin Archibald is the clan chief. Now the sword above that indicates that McNabb was knighted by Queen Victoria. Oh, really? So yes, he, he, yeah, he's sir, right? He, yeah. he was sir, but more than that, you would not on your smoking jacket and your smoking cap so, yeah. to make sure none of that tobacco smoke gets into your clothes or in your hair. Oh my god. I'd also like to point out there's a wash stand in there. Yes. Before you leave, you are expected to wash your face and your hands to make sure none of that smoke is this uh, home to introduce. This is Grandma Sophia, otherwise McNabb's mother-in-law. She has the largest portrait in the house. You might have heard of the expression, it'll cost an arm and a leg. Well, the largest portrait shows your arms and your legs, and it's the most expensive portrait, which costs arms and legs. Yeah. That's where I get that expression from. Now, opposite to Lady Mary, Mac to Grandma Sophia, we have Lady Mary McNabb. So that's Sir Alan's wife, mother of Sophia, and Sophia's little sister, Minnie. Minnie was actually born Mary, when you have Mary the mother and Mary the daughter, the daughter got nicknamed Minnie and she kept that name her entire life. Now next to Lady Mary McNabb, we have a younger If a parent wanted to have specific time with their child, they'd have the child sent for and accompanied by the nanny. But I'm sure, you know, every parent wants to spend time with their children. They want to have relaxed time, hear about their day, read stories, play games. So that's what this room's for. This is their family room. So they play charades, they read together. This family also is very musical. And they also certainly enjoy some music together. Now, this piano we're very proud of was made in Hamilton, CW, and the CW stands for Canada West. For a little is this painting here. So 
a little unusual that there's naked flesh at a time where you can see hands and faces only. But this is a religious story. So that's why the naked flesh was allowed. So I'm going to have you guys tell me what the story is. It's from the Old Testament. It's the story of a baby and a basket. Moses. 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 Exactly. Now the person who purchased this after McNabb in the auction didn't like the naked flesh. So you can see the white paint here on the lady's bottom. He painted over the entire scene. He covered all of the flesh. They added different flowers to the setting. The umbrella and the trees don't match. So he repainted the whole thing, keeping only the faces and the hands, because those are the hardest things to paint. So we, we, are, we gasp in horror that you paint over someone else's